right? Um, we have the European Venture Markets in Berlin. It's a massive event for investors and young companies. Um, here with me is a founder of a young company. Um, hello, tell hello. me who are you and what are you doing here? Great, thanks. I'm David Lair. I'm uh, CEO of Conatics, and we are here to pitch uh, tomorrow. Uh, we are uh, building a new uh, kind of semi-automated research system to help companies do their market research, investment research, uh, strategic research better, faster, and cheaper uh, by automating uh, major parts of the process. Um, brilliant. So. Um Tell me, tell me more about your products, about the competitors. Who, who are your competitors? Uh, sure. At, at the moment, uh, as far as we know, the real only competitor is manual processes that companies do themselves uh, because there has been very little automation, very little IT in what we call external business analytics, uh, which is pulling in unstructured data uh, from outside the firm or the company into the company and then structuring it. So there are many tools now for uh, analyzing data that has already been structured and for especially analyzing and sharing data that comes from inside your company, your own sales data or production or financial data. There are many, many tools uh, to make use of that data, but there are very few or no tools really to bring in unstructured data from outside uh, in a very organized way that uh, we're doing an end-to-end -end process. So we think there's no other system at the moment aside from hiring a lot of high-skilled people and letting them do uh, web searches and, and organize their work by hand. So are you focusing on just on Germany right now? Are you thinking global? What, what market is your target? Uh, well, uh, we're based in Berlin. Uh, we're also based in uh, the U.S. Uh, in near Washington, D.C., uh, and we think globally. Um, we are, of course, talking to customers and investors in Germany, uh, but also in the U.K., um, and uh, we hope soon also in the U.S. Um, some of the uh, potential customers we've spoken to are truly global, so it's hard to say where they're really domiciled. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're certainly um, thinking globally, uh, but also very active here uh, in Berlin and Germany. Um, you're looking for a VC. Is that, is that the reason why you participate in European venture markets? Uh, sure, that's uh, the main reason. Uh, we're talking to angels and, and venture capitalists. We're now in the process of closing our seed round. Uh, we have a couple of offers and we'd like to uh, find co-investors. Uh, we're also, of course, talking to potential customers. Um, there are some uh, large uh, companies here um, strategically uh, that uh, could be a, a potential customer for us. So, uh, And we're um, meeting and, and seeing also now many old friends uh, here on the pitching circuit around Germany. Germany and Europe, uh, who we already know. How much money do you need? Um, well, uh, for uh, the current round, we're raising 700,000 euro to get to the launch of our first product. So we're uh, almost finished with the complete prototype. We have uh, most of the pieces done, and we want to finish that, uh, bring it to companies and test it, uh, and then uh, iterate and, and package it as a product uh, when, within um, less than 18 months. And so we're looking to uh, get to the point where we can actually launch uh, the product and uh, begin booking revenues and and for that where uh, we think we can do that on uh, 700,000 euro if you started your company today what would you do differently um, that's a good question uh, maybe uh, I probably the the main lesson of experience that uh, has been pounded into me is that uh, you really should finish as much of your product as possible first before you try talking to investors. Even so-called uh, uh, um, early stage, seed stage, uh, venture, uh, everyone's interested in, in a product that they can see uh, and that's completed. So um, so if you want to sequence your process, um, you might put more time and uh, resources up front into finishing as much of the product as you can so that you can show something before even bothering to uh, to contact and speak to investors. Um, there are exceptions uh, to be sure, but, but this is the rule that, that we keep bumping up against. What piece of advice would you give to young founders, young startups who are somewhere there in the world and working on a startup, working on a project in the very early stage? What would you tell them to do or to what, what would you tell them to avoid? 
Well, um, uh, what would I tell them to do? Uh, ju just do it. Um, uh, the other thing is that uh, there are many kinds of resources out there now uh, beyond just investment, uh, different kinds of in-kind resources and support uh, that actually are very valuable and are available, uh, can be available at a very early stage. There are many incubators now, uh, many universities now are trying to uh, to get into incubation and this has been very helpful uh, for us. Uh, many uh, big software companies now are offering uh, free software packages and other kinds of support uh, that's also been very valuable for us. So pull in whatever resources you can and don't only focus on financial investors. And of course you've got to uh, get other people passionate about your idea. Uh, you've got to get other people helping and working on your idea uh, even if they can only do it part-time because they have some other full-time gig. But uh, the more of that uh, momentum you can build uh, the uh, the 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 more that will pay off. Uh, brilliant! It's been a massive pleasure. Good luck with your pitching tomorrow, and thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>